You are not where you're supposed to be because of you. It's all you. You tell yourself lies, reasons. I'm too tired. I need to rest. I'm too hungry. I'm too full. Something else is more important. Lies. I don't have time. Lies, 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 lies. Ask yourself, what remarkably stupid things am I doing on a regular basis to absolutely screw up my life? What would happen if you just stop wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? Because you're not everything you could be and you know it. If you keep thinking the same thoughts, keep demonstrating the same behaviors, keep living by the same feelings and emotions, your personal reality is going to stay exactly the same. But if you have new thoughts that lead to new choices, that demonstrate new actions, that create new experiences, that cause you to feel differently, you will begin to walk into a new future. I need you to confront you because you don't want holding you up. I need you to look in the mirror and tell you, you are not going to do me like this no more. You're not going to continue to sabotage me. You're not going to keep procrastinating. You're not. You know you should be further in life, but you keep letting you slide. Hold you accountable and don't let you off the hook. If for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, what would you be like? You'd be 10 times more efficient, 20 times more efficient. And you could be way better. You could be incomparably better across multiple dimensions. You do something away from the normality of what you've been doing. Why not try it, man? Shock the system. Get up at four in the morning one day, just one day, and go for a fucking run. Commit to one day and see how you feel as you're jogging it back in around five or something, as your neighbors are still asleep. Well, your day's already provided something for you. Mentally, you feel like, wow, man, that was in a lie. And say, I've got to do this. This is my stuff. This is why I showed up. It's not going to be easy. When you want to change, it's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. So yes, I'm going to do something about this situation. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. The question is not, is it possible for you to be a millionaire? Is it possible for you to have all your dreams become a reality in your lifetime? Yes, it is possible. But the real question is, have you made the decision? Once you make a decision and you go all in and you say, I ain't quitting till I get there. I ain't giving up. I ain't giving in. I'll do whatever it takes to be successful. And when you make that decision, when you look you in the mirror, when you tell yourself that, look, I'm through, I'll do whatever it takes. I guarantee you, that's the day your dream begins to happen. So then, when you have a purpose or a vision or a mission or an intent that's bigger than you, it means it signifies something that's ongoing. You could have a purpose to go east, and there's never an end to east. You could have a purpose to be healthy, there's always more health to have. You could have a purpose to be wealthy, there's a never an end to wealth. You could have a purpose for knowledge, and there's never an end to knowledge. It signifies a direction. My purpose is to transform individuals in order to transform a culture. And I'm clear on that purpose, and it gets me up in the morning every single day. So then, how do you bring a vision from the world of possibility into the world of reality? From thought all the way down into matter from what we say in quantum physics from the wave of possibilities all the way down into the particle from the immaterial something that doesn't exist yet into the material from the world beyond the senses to the world of the senses how do we do that well it requires then setting up goals in alignment with your purpose so let's just say you have a purpose to go in a certain direction. Your purpose signifies a direction, but your goals should always be in alignment with your purpose. And people who have goals in alignment with their purpose, 
Their goals are a natural side effect of them being on purpose. So then what about getting healthy? You may say, okay, I want to lower my heart rate. That's one of my goals. I want to lose you know, 10 kilos. I want to have more energy. I want to wear a new wardrobe and have a new relationship. This is the short-term goal at the beginning, and the long-term goal is at the end. And as long as you keep making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, reproducing the same experiences, feeling the same way, you'll arrive at all of those goals. <clears throat> what about becoming abundant? You may say you want to be wealthy, and to me it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Wealth is a state of mind. You may want to start a new business. Once you start that new business, you may want to hire two new staff employees in six months. Then you may say you want to buy a company vehicle. And of course, then the next one is buy a new house. And then ultimately what? Make a million dollars? Why not? If that's your goal, to reflect your purpose, then you should arrive at it. Are you still with me? How about learning knowledge? Is there ever an end to knowledge? You may want to get an associate's degree. And then you may want to get a bachelor's degree. And then you may want to get a master's degree. You may want to get a doctorate degree. And then you may want to finally do research. But all of those things are alignment with your purpose, is it not? Now, I want you to understand that there is a very specific formula for excellence. And the formula requires a person who has a clear purpose. But there are two other ingredients that put this together. The first thing is called competence. You know what competence is? Somebody who does something really well. The more competent they are, the better they are at doing something. The third thing is called accountability. Accountability means if you say you're going to do something, you do it. And if someone asks you to do something, you do it really well. And if you combine a person who's on purpose with a high level of competence and accountability, you have excellence in an individual. I run three companies, and all three companies, my teams, are very high on their purpose scale, they better align with my purpose. They have very high level of competence, and they are very high on the accountability scale. And I don't even bother them. I never even manage them. Because if they're not competent, accountable, and on purpose, they're going to stand out with the rest of the culture, and other people are going to be doing their job, and they are not going to keep up. And I say to my staff, I run an Olympic level team. You have to be able to play at an Olympic level. If you can't be competent and accountable on purpose, there's nothing personal. We just have to cut you because we're moving at a fast pace. Be someone who is cool under pressure. Value serenity instead of outrage. It seems that our culture is moving in the wrong direction here. If you are blessed enough to not be on social media, you might be surprised to learn that the angriest, most passionate public figures are rewarded with the most clicks and biggest audiences. Our culture has begun to confuse passion with substance, reward the loudest and angriest voices, and thus incentivize behavior wholly at odds with stoic wisdom. The number of decibels your voice hits as you scream about how right you are is not necessarily an indicator of how much sense you are making. As a society founded on reason and Western Enlightenment ideals, we must hold ourselves to a higher standard. We have to collectively stop allowing emotion and passion to pass for reason and factual debate. The media's goal is to literally challenge your ability to be still. A tough American 
intent on improving upon their current self is not tricked into an emotional reaction by these headlines. You do not write an angry tweet. You do not hurl an insult. You are cool and measured and skeptical. You are curious what the agenda of the journalist might be and what facts or context they might be leaving out. You seek out a different story on the same topic from an opposing view and you find out that many of the claims made in the original story were convincingly debunked. And just like that, you are a Zen master of stillness and stoicism. I will not quit in the face of danger or pain or self-doubt. I will not justify the easier path before me. I decide that all my actions, not just some matter. Every small task is a contribution toward a higher purpose. Every day is undertaken with a sense of duty to be better than I was yesterday, even in the smallest of ways. I seek out hardship. I do not run from pain, but embrace it, because I derive strength from my suffering. I confront the inevitable trials of life with a smile. I plan to keep my head to be still when chaos overwhelms me. I will tell the story of my failures and hardships as a victor, not a victim. I will be grateful. Millions who have gone before me have suffered too much, fought too hard, and been blessed with far too little for me to squander this life. So I won't. My purpose will be to uphold and protect the spirit of our great republic, knowing that the values we hold dear can be preserved only by a strong people. I will do my part. I will live with fortitude.